Hi, everybody. Hey, good evening. Welcome to For Better. Yes, welcome, welcome. We're Lauren and Joy Hershey coming to you once again from Dubuque, Iowa. Yes, it's and, nice uh, enough we're on the porch tonight. Hey, wonderful, so wonderful. thankful spring for spring. has arrived. Yes. Yeah, it became official on Sunday when we grilled chicken. So <laughs> if you get the grill out, it's spring. Right. So wonderful, wonderful. Hey, thanks, Randy, for joining us. And Peggy, glad you're watching with us. Hey, what day is it today? It's National Caramel Popcorn Day. National Caramel Popcorn Day. Yay. So what's your favorite kind of caramel popcorn? We have been sitting here talking about it, and <laughs> uh, we even expanded a picture on the Internet just to make sure, and oh, my goodness, it just fling a craving on you like Bud, Bud Wright used to say. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, do you like your caramel popcorn with nuts or without? What kind of, what's your favorite kind, yeah. of, kind of caramel popcorn? We do have those popcorn places in uh, in town that yes. specialize in different kinds of popcorn, yeah, caramel, stuff. and others. Yeah. And there's the, do they call it the tri-state blend or the, 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 the Mississippi mix, or something. something? It's got cheddar popcorn and caramel popcorn mixed together. Yeah. Those are pretty good. Those are delicious. But it's just National Caramel Popcorn Day, though. So do you like your caramel popcorn with peanuts or not? Or pecans? Almonds? I like the kind that you get in the store in a little box, and it's always a small box for a lot of money, it seems, because it's not exactly caramel. It's more oh, like butter toffee. Butter toffee, yes. And it has, and the, it's clumpy, and then it has like almonds in it and mm -hmm. pecans all clumped together with yeah. the sweetness. I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good thing. It's got to yeah. be from God. Every good and perfect gift comes it's from comes Him. From Every good thing comes from Him. So <laughs> people might argue whether sugar is actually good for you. <laughs> well, that's all. Right. People will argue over everything. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. So, anyway, any so is good. Any is good. I like yep. that. Easy I to please. We've got to be easy to please. Yeah. So it's like a wonderful, that. beautiful day, and uh, we got some good things to talk about tonight. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, let's pray. Okay. We'll get right into yeah. it. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for helping us to communicate in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us, guys. And yeah. do be sharing this, if you will, and, and watch parties and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we want to talk to you tonight about marriage being a covenant. Uh, there's a lot of different models of marriage out there. Yeah. We've been doing some thinking and teaching, actually, today at a Bible school in France. And so uh, that's pretty good from Dubuque yeah. and uh, ministering over there talking about marriage. And uh, it just really seems that we need to talk about marriage as a covenant today because there are so many models of marriage and uh, it's not a legal relationship. It is a legal relationship, but it's not just a legal relationship. And so the difference is that two people become one in a covenant, yeah. and uh, which is really cool when you think about the fact that marriage here on earth reflects Christ, Christ's relationship with the church, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really uh, amazing. So, yeah. what are some of the promises and such? What about yeah? The so, thinking about promises, I just taught at our Bible school at church a, a section of a. a series that I was doing or a class that I was doing on covenant and just you know just reminded me as we were talking about covenant tonight that when a covenant is made certain promises are given yeah. and in a blood covenant traditionally when people make a covenant their promises are some pretty big promises so they promise basically their whole self yes. <laughs> to the other person they this promise, is really important yes they promise they're all of their, all that they have, mm -hmm. they give to the other person. And the other person then responds the same way because a covenant is like an equal, um, equal giving. They promise them, all of themselves to the yeah. other one. They promise all of their strength to the other person, all of their ability yeah. to protect. Oh, the they promise that to the other person. They're saying, all that I have up to my life yeah. belongs to you. 
and the other person then is reciprocal to that and promises that back. And that's a traditional uh, mm -hmm. promise uh, given to us an example in the Word of God, of course. Yeah. We're in covenant with the Lord. He made a covenant uh, with His blood, promising all of Himself to us. Yeah, in, our marriage, in our marriage vows, I like to, to use the marriage vows where and lead the, the two people that are joining in marriage to say that all that I am and all that I have, I give to you. Yeah. And it's such a a bonding what experience. a big promise wow it's and, huge and yeah. i don't know that everybody you know when people are involved in a wedding you know mm -hmm. sometimes they are so caught up in the details of yeah, that's true how everybody looks and how everybody's standing and what they're going to do at the reception and where they're going to go on the honeymoon I don't know that they always understand yeah. the depth of what they are promising to one another. And hopefully, though, they do in preparation for the wedding day. Hopefully yeah. they consider the promises that they really are making. Because I think that's beautiful when you include that in the wedding ceremony. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, the blood covenant. You know, uh, covenant was pictured in, when I was a, a kid. We'd watch cowboy movies or you know you see the movies sometimes where people would make a blood covenant yeah where sometimes they would s slice their hand and mingle the blood together mm -hmm. and really they they the point is that the by mingling their blood they become one so that and they have a scar there to yeah. where the uh, scar the scar was to be a reminder and to show everybody that they're in covenant with somebody. And mm -hmm. when you mess with me, you mess with this person that, who I have made a covenant yeah. with. The rest and, of me over there. Yeah, and another yeah. thing about the mingling of the blood is significant because once blood is mingled, it can't be unmingled. Wow. It can never be separated then again. And that was the what they were showing in mingling the blood. Yeah. That I and, and they would have a covenant meal I don't know how deep mm -hmm. you want to get into this, yeah. but they would have a covenant meal. And by sharing that, they were saying, I am coming into you and you are coming into me. And really, that's where the wedding cake comes in. Yeah. That's why the bride and the groom at a wedding feed each other the cake. You know, that's why, you know, sometimes you see they smash it in, in one another. Really, it's because they don't understand the symbolism of, of the, the wedding cake meal. or even the... The rings that we wear, the wedding rings that we wear, you know, it's not a, it's not a scar as such, but uh, it's, it's, a, a, it's a symbol. I'm that, not alone. I'm not alone. Hi, David and Teresa. Thanks and so, for joining us. Adam and Eve are joined by a covenant. Uh, God was a witness of their of their wedding. He performed the first marriage, <laughs> and uh, in Malachi chapter two. God reminds the Israelites that he attends the weddings and he witnessed, he was a witness at their wedding mm -hmm. and uh, they were joined by covenant. So yeah. what's your reason? So no. in Malachi, the whole book yeah. is kind of about how God's people had gone away from really their relationship with mm -hmm. God. And so their offerings that they were bringing to the altar, God was not accepting them. Right. And they were saying, well, why aren't you accepting our mm -hmm. offerings, God? And here's what it says. It said, yet you say, for what reason? For what reason are you not accepting our offerings? And here's what he said. Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion, your wife by covenant. Yeah. But he did, did, did he not make them one? having a remnant of the spirit, and why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. So they, they, were, they were joined with, by covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, not just legal contract, but they became one. And that's really what's on my heart to really mm -hmm. impress upon you that uh, it's not just two entering into a legal agreement. The two of you become one. Yeah. It's really, it's a, a mystery. It's, it's phenomenal. It's the, what relationally is the deepest 
relationship two human beings can enter into and you literally become come one together. Yeah, and it's serious. And, uh, God takes covenant seriously. And you know, even in our traditional weddings, we say, we used to say, anyway, I don't mm -hmm. know if you still say it, but I was thinking back, but we say, you know, we're gathered here today in the, you know, in the Before, sight of God yeah. and these witnesses. Yes. And that's because we're saying, God is witnessing yes. this covenant that we're making today. God's taking this seriously. This is not just a flippant formality right. that we're going through that we're like, ha ha, you know, this doesn't really mean anything. I can't wait till I get to the reception. But God yeah. <laughs> is supposed to be a place where we're in the presence of God and we're serious about the promises that we're making to each other. And so whether you made your covenant relationship mm -hmm. with a great understanding or not yeah. you can always adopt right uh, as your understanding uh, develops mm -hmm. of what your covenant relationship should be yeah then you can make those promises to each other in the future like when we got married <laughs> I mean we were super young and we've told oh, you this my before yeah. we were yeah. 16 and 17 years old and you think we had an idea of covenant oh, man. we didn't even know God <laughs> And so we didn't make a good promise at the no. at the point of our marriage. But as God has revealed to us, yeah. you know, his desire for marriage and his best for marriage, then we've been able to uh, continue to make good promises yes. and, and make covenant promises to each other and stick by those promises now. So thank God that, oh, you know, that's not the end. Uh, and you can you can make it better as time goes on. But I thought it was interesting as I, we were reading that scripture yeah. in Malachi, if I can talk about that sure. word Go treacherously, ahead. just yeah. oh, yeah. briefly, sure. how God said, said to them, I'm not happy with you. Like you have dealt treacherously with the wife of your youth. And I thought, what's, what's he mean treacherously? Yeah. What were they doing that he saw as treacherous? And so I looked up that word treacherously and it really means to act covertly, to deal deceitfully, or unfaithfully, or fraudulently. <laughs> so that's pretty yeah. bad. Like they were not being faithful to their wives, yeah. and they were being, uh, you know, um, dishonest yeah. with their wives. And God took that very seriously, and that's why He wasn't accepting. When they accepted their offerings. Their offerings. And yeah. he was like, your hearts are not right with me because this is what you're doing. You're not being honest with your wife. You made a promise by covenant and you're unfaithful you're to being her. You're disloyal to her. So God takes that pretty seriously. In 1 Peter 3, he says the same thing to us <clears throat> husbands that to live with our wives in an understanding way, understanding her and uh, live in that understanding lest our Lest our prayers be hindered. Yeah, yeah. So he takes it. Uh, he takes your heart departing from the covenant very seriously. Yeah. He, he said there to uh, guard the spirit of your marriage. Yeah. The spirit of marriage. Yeah. Don't he let wants it slip. you to be one. Yeah. And you can't be one if you're sneaking around, doing things that your spouse doesn't know of. You're yeah. hiding things from your spouse. You're you have a separate life withholding things that your spouse doesn't know about you know you're not the cia hmm. you're not a covert <laughs> no you're not supposed to be like doing, doing black ops, ops. <laughs> 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 that your spouse doesn't know yeah, about that's, that's true so those if you're doing things that are sneaking around things that yeah. you can't show your spouse on your phone or things like that mm -hmm. you uh need to make that right get your heart right Get your life right and be open and honest so that you guys can be one in that covenant together. It's really, that's part of the what happened with, with when sin came into the world. You remember in Genesis, how Adam uh, sinned and their whole character changed. There was just something that came in with the, we call it the fall, the yeah. fall of man, yeah. it is a, kind of an independence. Hmm. Where in a married couple, just like you see it with Adam and Eve right there, where they'd been close and one, uh, then sin came in and
God wondered, where are you, Adam? Have you eaten of the tree? And he said, the woman, (laughs) the woman which you gave me. Right. Suddenly the blaming and finger pointing and all of that. That's like, I'm over here and you're over there. That independence. Instead of us being together, he didn't say like, we sinned, we missed it. Yeah. He said, he pointed and got, they, they faced yeah. off a little bit there instead of being one. And you so that was a result of the mm-hmm. fall and we don't want that. You end up, people end up being <clears throat> passive or aggressive. Yeah. Or, or passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Unhealthy in the way they're dealing with yeah. life and yeah. relationships. Trying to control one another and, and do their <clears throat> thing <throat> instead of a we thing. Yeah. You know, um, and... And sometimes you see it, uh, it well, I'll just say it this way. In this covenant relationship, the, the husband and the wife should be complementing each other, not competing with each other. Yes. You know, and so that happens sometimes. They should be adding adding strength to strength. That is- We're back. <laughs> We're back. I hope you guys are still there. Jill's watching. Hi, okay. Jill. So this is the scripture I was going to read out of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down to- yeah. together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Yeah, you know, in the, the in, beauty of companionship. Yes. Yeah. Uh, God, after making everything and saying it was good, it was good, it was good, said it's not good for man to be alone. Yeah. He made a helper comparable to Adam and brought Eve to him. And yeah. the fact that uh, he brought a helper or an added strength, that's what a helper is, an added strength, it doesn't mean that Adam was a needy person. Right. He just had, had some things that he needed a helper with. Mm-hmm. And when God brings a man and a woman together uh, in, a, in a covenant of marriage, man, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But it is a covenant. And so, you know, each of us have to decide. I want to encourage you guys to, uh, even if you have separate checking accounts, for instance, uh, talk about your finances, how you're going to handle them. Be you know, together. Be in together it. on it. Yeah. Even if you have separate checking accounts, mm-hmm. they should. Uh, you should have a joint purpose in your life that yeah. you're working toward, where you don't have one person working for. Well, these are my financial goals, yeah. and these are my financial goals. But that you have financial goals together, and if that means one of you has a checking account for like the household stuff and whatever, and somebody else has a checking account for Harbor Freight. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, You know, or for investments or for, you know, if you maybe have separate accounts for certain functions, at least you're agreed and you're going together in your life and in your goals. And you each have access to what belongs to the other one. And we've seen how sometimes a widow and a widower will will marry. Later in life. Later in life. They've got children, grown children. And uh, those children's, uh, are are looking for their inheritance. They're expecting, mm-hmm. and and a lot of times those uh, survivors that let's just say a, a man's wife dies and a woman's husband dies, mm-hmm. and their children really in the, the that man and that woman in their heart, they've already kind of given ownership of their mm-hmm. estate, so to speak, over their children, and then they meet, they fall in love, and they get married uh, to this new person. And sometimes they'll decide between the two of them that what my previous wife and I had, that's going to be inherited for my children. She'll say what my previous husband and I had, that's going to be inheritance for my children. It's almost a yours, mine, and ours situation, but it's agreed to. You know, that really yeah. that that is already the kids'. Yeah, it's kind of a different situation because mm-hmm. it's honoring Yes. The life uh, that and the legacy that has been built by somebody else, you know, when somebody's widowed. And that's a really a nice thing um, that can happen. And we're not yeah. saying that that would be unbiblical. Right. You know, um, but it needs to be agreed upon and not like a, a combative or a selfishness to right. it, 
but just an honoring of the lives that are maybe gone before um, yeah. and an honoring of the children from that uh, just, marriage. So we're not saying that that's unscriptural or whatever, but there's got to still that yeah. couple needs to have oneness yes. in that decision and yeah. oneness in their life. If they decide they're going to be married that's right. and they're going to build a life together and become one flesh uh, as a, a new married couple, yeah. then they... They still need to have that spirit that we're one. They're leaving an authority to become an authority. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. they're they're going to build something that never existed before, and really nobody outside of the covenant. Not if they're younger, not parents on either side, uh, not siblings, not even their children, really have any right to tell them how they're going to do the covenant. Right. <laughs> I mean, this is a, a relationship where the two of them are coming together. And, but it's one. It's so much more than just a legal contract. There, and let me say it again, there's just something so rich, deep, and powerful in saying to one another, all that I am and all that I have, all that I am I, I bring to you and all that I have I give to you. And oh man, when, when you both can say that and, and it's real, oh my goodness. Now two are becoming one in the sight of God and God's blessing is upon it. He's witnessing it. And then, then you hold to it. You, yeah. you resist the temptations to, to be disloyal yeah. and you, you, you stay with it. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Hey, we love you guys. We Just love you. stir tonight to talk to you about a covenant. And uh, you can talk these things over as husband and wife. You know, what does that mean for you and me? Mm -hmm. You know, that... Uh, might need to make some adjustments yeah. in our lives. We, we had to. <laughs> yeah, we might need to make some yeah. fresh promises, some fresh commitments to each other. Might and, have to say, Lord, forgive us yeah. for the mess we made <laughs> out of what you gave us. Help right. us to have a brand new marriage. That's what we did and God did. God's into fresh starts. Oh, man. Amen. Hey, we just had Easter. Yes. New life, resurrection life. God's into resurrecting things. Oh, man, no kidding. It's, he's got a great plan for your life. Yeah. So, Father, bless these people tonight. Yes. All the single people bless looking them. forward to getting married and yes. getting married. And all those single people that wouldn't touch marriage with a 10-foot pole because <laughs> problems or hurts, help them, Lord, yes. to, to catch your heal loving vision, heal their hearts, and help every single person that's catching this video. Hallelujah. Now and in the future, we thank you, Lord, for touching them in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey, love you guys. Have a great week, you guys. Have a great we week. Love you. Bye now.